From the second line of Daf Tzadik Chesem Rasa, he is a woman. We learned yesterday that in the last couple of days that a woman, if she is entitled to Mizonos, according to everybody, she can sell property of the Orshim as a woman who's an Almona, who has lost her husband, and the estate went to her children, uh, or to his children rather, could be her children as well, but the main thing is they're his children. And uh, she's allowed, she, because of her exhibit, she's entitled to be like exhibit, she's entitled to get Mazonos until she gets remarried. And um, in order to get Mazonos, she's allowed to sell off property even without going to Bezin, even without Bezin supervision uh, and uh, checking to make sure she's getting the right price, et cetera, because she needs to eat. For the Ksuba, the Chacham said, even for the Ksuba, she could sell off. According to Shimon, she could only sell off with the Bezin if you're talking about the Ksuba. So now we have a case where it's. Uh, the Tafsa Kasa the Kasma the Tsubasa. She grabbed, she seized a, a silver cup um, as partial payment for her Ksuba. Now, technically, uh, she's not really only entitled to collect from Karka for the Ksuba, but she grabbed the silver cup in partial payment of her Ksuba. Yesterday, we saw at the end of the daf that there's Machlokas, the Mishnah between the Chachamim and Rab Shimon about this issue also. According to Rabbi Shimon, if she got paid part of her ksuba already, she's no longer entitled to Mizonos. According to Rabbi <coughs> partial payment of the ksuba does not uh, remove her, remove the ability to collect Mizonos. So here she she had taken, she had seized the silver cup as partial payment for ksuba. Ketav Mizonos, she wanted Mizonos. Also, they came to Rabbi, they came for Rabbi. The Chacham, the, the Yisomim saying, we don't know if we have to pay the Mizonos anymore since she collected part of her ksuba already. Amalahu, he told them, uh, Amul the Askim he told the Yisam Zil Havel Mizonos go give her Mizonos she's entitled to food lest the Chash Lord of Shimon nobody is concerned about Rav Shimon's opinion to Amul who said Lo Amin and mixes Kesef Kachal Kesef the Chacham said that even if she's owed part of the money then it's like she's owed all the money and she's still entitled to the Ksuba Rav Shimon says no the mixes is Kesef if she's only Mizonos. part of the Kesef if she's still entitled to the Mizonos right uh, I said Mizonos she's still entitled to the Mizonos even though she's Hamzanos, even though she collected part of the Ksuba. Quantra Shim, once she collected part of the Ksuba, um, uh, the, uh, he says, mix us Kesef, she sold part of the Kesef. Lower me to mix the Kesef, it's like she sold all the money, but rather if she got part of the Ksuba, Quantra Shim, she's no longer in Talk Amazonas. We don't hold that way. So since even though uh, even though she's been paid part of the Ksuba by grabbing onto the silver cup, she still hasn't been paid the entire Ksuba, and therefore she's in Talk Amazonas. That was what the psak was. They came for rubber, that was possible. Shalach lay, rabba braid rubber of Yosef. Macherish lo bebezin. When, as we've said, she's entitled to sell according to everybody from Zonos. If she's entitled to sell, she's entitled to collect even without going to Bezin because she needs to eat. When she, and according to Chum, she can even like exhibit that way. When she sells without a Bezin, Srikha Shua, does she have to make a Shua that she hasn't been paid? Because that's what she's doing over there. Of course, it's a Shua Drabbanan. Does she have to? Because uh, she's swearing to collect, which is always a shvuah drabbanan. Does she have to make a shvuah that she hasn't been paid? And that is that she's entitled to the whole ksuba, or or entitled to mizonos, or not? Does she have to make a shvuah or not? So it's more of a tibor lachah raza. Since you're asking about a shvuah, it's presumed way Tosis learns. Since you're asking about shvuah, machal the she doesn't have to make a public announcement. In other words, to make sure that she gets a fair price for the what she is selling. Does she have to make a public announcement? Like you make a, a uh, like an auction. It's not technically an auction, but when you make an auction, you do a public announcement. Does she have to make a public announcement or not? So why are you asking about a shvua? Why don't you ask about a chrozah? You're assuming she doesn't have to make a public announcement. There's no question about the public announcement. Let's say a woman did not sell off property. She just took a piece of property for herself. She just assessed it for herself. That's meaningless. If the Yisam then afterwards want to say, listen, we'll pay you, get off the property, just grabbing it for herself doesn't do anything. What is the case there? If she made a public announcement of my loss of a clump, why can't she, why is what she did nothing? She made a public announcement. Presumably, she assessed it at a fair price because people made offers. El of the offers must be that she didn't make a public announcement. Since she didn't make a public announcement, how do we know that she grabbed the amount of land which is commensurate with her ksuba? Well, we know what she grabbed. I don't understand. Yeah, 
Yeah, so, know what she took. so right, so you know what she took, but it hasn't been assessed. It hasn't been assessed. El Abdul Lo Achras, she didn't make it a public announcement. Lots of who loss will come. Hola Achar, if she sold it to somebody else, Masha Asa, Asa, what she's done is done because if other people were involved, she made a valid sale. Presumably, it was assessed in some manner, even though there was no Achraza. So you see, you don't need a Achraza because otherwise, she says, if she grabbed it for herself, the Chum gets the, the Yisam could say, listen, uh, what do you mean you grab it for yourself? You didn't sell it. If you some want to pay her off the money, Lachas Man, they can go take from it. She didn't, how did she acquire it? It was already in, it was in the house, so to speak. It was on their land. How did she make a Kenyan over here? With what authorization did she do? But if she sold it to somebody else, as we learned in the last couple of days, she's allowed to sell up property to collect Mazonas or to collect Yuxibakorn. So it's mashma because if she made a achraza, why shouldn't she? Why shouldn't what she took be valid? Says so that doesn't mean anything. Lolam dachers could be. It's speaking about where she made achraza. She made a public announcement. With Amila, wait, tell her man shemlach who assessed it for you. Okay, you made a public announcement. Miki bal rashes mi miki bal tamachirasu. Lo mi besim, lo mi yisomim. Who'd you acquire it from? You didn't. You didn't. You didn't approach her. See, it's one thing. When she sells off property that belongs to the Yisamim, she's allowed to because she's selling it to a third party. There's a sale there involved. There's a purchase, and she's entitled to do it according to the kind of chum because she has to eat. According to, according, according to everybody, the chum, I mean, in general, the chum, and let's say according to her mayor, she could even she can even sell for her ksuba, but she's selling it to a third party. The reason why it doesn't work, even if she made it a public announcement, if she grabbed it for herself, is because there was no transaction over here. She just took it. She just took it for herself. It's not like a piece of metal and like the co- silver cup, which was in her possession. Over right, here, how did she her. acquire the land? Hmm? It's already the Shuba to her. Why can't she just take it? She, she can't can sell it. Why can't she just take oh, it? She can't What's just, the difference in that? The answer is she can't take it unless she made a Shua. If she just grabbed it on her own, unless she, without swearing to somebody, she can't do it. Like, like a story with the head when this man, somebody deposited with him uh, either either some fodder or rushes, it could be coral, uh, almog, a coral from Yasmin. And he said, you know what? I'm going to borrow me a Zuzi. He went and he assessed it for himself for worth 400 Zuz. In other words, he says, okay, I'll put down 400 Zuz and I'm keeping it. Iker, it got, it went up in value. Kombishis me was worth now 600. Who assessed it for you? In other words, if a Bezdin wasn't involved, if there were, the Asolim weren't involved, there was no third party involved, in what way did you make, what way did you keep it for yourself? It was given to you as a deposit. You had no right just to go take it and say, oh, you know what? I think it's worth this amount of money and I'm going to keep it for myself. If there was no transaction between a third party, you see, it's different where she sold it to somebody. So when they sold it to somebody, there's a sale. Now you might say it was worth, more she made a mistake, less. We're going to talk about that in the next mission in a minute. That uh, if she made a mistake and uh, and sold it for the wrong amount of money, what happens there? But at least there was a third party involved. But if she just grabbed it for herself, that doesn't mean anything. Again, grabbing metalclin, so she grabbed metalclin. It's in her hand. But if it's only if it's only uh, karka and she, there was no transaction, there was no formal transaction. What entitles her to keep it? That's what we say. They could say man shemlach who assessed a few and rashes mimi kibal tamachirazu. Never left their shus. She sold it to somebody else. She assessed it to somebody else. Chum gave her permission to sell it. The Chum did not give her permission to keep it. She just can't keep it on her own because then there's there's really no transaction. She's just there and she's taking it. The Chum didn't give a right to it. Now you could make a chazaka. How is how is Karka Nikdam Kesav Shtar Chazaka? Yes, it's lean to her. The property is mortgaged to her. A, against that, she can collect her ksuba. Meaning, if they don't give her cash for the ksuba, which they owe her two hundred dollars or two million dollars, whatever it was, she can go and sell the property off at, at the at the proper value and and collect it from there. But she just can't take the karka by itself. They didn't give her permission for that. There was no besan involved. There was no yisum involved. She just says, "I'm sitting on. I'm taking it." Like here, where this guy was given a deposit, he says, you know what? The kids don't need the coral. I'll assess it at 400 and keep it. Then, of course, the next day it's worth more money. It's like if you have a bearer bond or a bearer uh, uh, note, a uh, bearer uh, share of something, and it belongs to everyone. It was deposited with the guy. He says, I'll keep it myself. It's worth today in the market so and so much. 
and I'm going to keep it myself. You can't do that. It wasn't the, he didn't have permission to do that. It wasn't a sale. So uh, that's what we say over here too. The Allah is in the question, do you need a shvur? Yes, you need a shvur when you're collecting. But you don't need a public announcement. Meaning, she, as long as she has the ability, the Chum gave her the right to sell it at the fair at the fair value. She doesn't have to make a public announcement, but she has to sell it at fair market value. And she still has to make a shvua that she hasn't been paid. Because when she sells it, what is she doing? She's selling it off and keeping the money for her mazonas, but she has to swear to the Yisoman that she hasn't been paid off already. Does, does any creditor have to be, not to be bad for the season has to make a shvua? He hasn't been paid. Shvud um, If he seizes something, yeah, he he's probably be forced. Yeah, secure, right, it. right. You sell it, whatever. Right, you right. Have to make a shvua. That he has well, to pay. okay. So, so um, uh, in a regular case, if he has an IOU, he has a star. Presumably, he doesn't have to make a shvua. If he's collecting from Yisomim, <coughs> we have a special rule. This is because of Yisomim. You're shvua. collecting from Yisomim. You have to make a shvua. Right, to make a shvua. And also it's likely that that's one thing for sure. And the second thing is that in the case of a wife, it's very common that he would have left her a package of money in the safe. You understand that it's likely that she could have been paid off already. So he has to swear that she hasn't been paid off by the, by the husband. But in the case of a regular IOU, a Balfov, a Malvin, a Lova, he has no presumption that he's been paid off. Otherwise he would have demanded the uh, IOU right. back. Yeah. It's still, but if, she's, if he's collecting from you, Soman, then you do have. Because if you have some, that's a bal a bali par of minas yisum ain't this one ain't ain't the par nel bishvur. Hamonish ayisik zubas m'sayim. So now, okay, fine. So we've learned now that she's entitled to sell property to collect from mazonos, according to everyone. Let's assume we're collecting we're talking about mazonos, and according to the chachamim, she could even collect her her um, her ksuba. So let's say she also, let's say her ksuba was hamonish ayisik zubas m'sayim. She had a standard ksuba of two hundred dollars. Umach roshava mana b'masayim. What happened was this. So she went off and she says, okay, I, I need to, I'm gonna, let's say according to Chum, she can see that she could sell even for her, um, even for the Ksuba, right? Um, without a Besden, I'm assuming we're doing here without a Besden. So according to Chum, she can collect her Ksuba and she sold the Ksuba, she, she sold the property, what she did was this, she sold property that was only worth a hundred, she sold that for 200. So what did she do? She made a nice profit over here. So what would you say? Would you say she got her 200 dollars and she's done? Or do you say that, wait a minute, she only took 100 dollars worth of property. She's still entitled to another 100 dollars worth of property. So he says, oh, shove him a sign of money. Let's say she got cheated. She took a piece of property that was worth 200, but she sold it for only 100. The scout looks the boss, so that's it, she's done. In other words, Certainly, from the from the children's point of view, she took a piece of property that's worth two hundred dollars, which is what her ksuba is, and she only got a hundred dollars for it. Well, tough luck. You got a bad deal. What do you want from the? You want more? You want to take more land? You already took two hundred dollars worth. You just uh, the, there. We understand skavu ksubasa. But what about the first case where she had a ksuba? The same thing. She had a ksuba two hundred, and she sold a piece of property that was only worth a hundred, but she got two hundred for it. So you're saying that's it? That she doesn't get any more? Meaning, who gets the profit? Who profits over here? The assumption because they get to keep the other hundred dollars worth of property. We'll see why in the Gemara. Let's say Uksiba was worth a hundred. In other words, let's say she was an Amana, right? So she owned, she got married, she was an Amana or a Grusha. She only had a Ksiba of a hundred. Umachur Shava Mana, the Diner Bamana. Listen to this though. She sold a little bit too much. She sold too much. What did she do? She took a piece of land that was worth $101 and sold it for. $100. So who got cheated now? The children. The Yusum got cheated. So the whole deal is off. Now we're going to talk about that. Even if she says, listen, I'll, I'll get the dinner back. I'll, I'll, buy, I'll buy back the uh, one dinner's worth of land and return it to the children. The deal is no good. Because she stole, she took too much. She took too much land. Even, even if she, she wants to return it, even if she wants, I'll pay the better bottle. She owes the dinner. Ain't no rishus limkor. Nimsa shekola mecher tola sherei bevas achas oisa. The deal is off. What, what, one, that deal is a mistake. Even if she now promises to go back, forget about it. The deal is off. 
the deal is off. Deal. Let her the let her go back and and only take one buyer. What else? Uh, too bad. It's a uh, you got to be let the buyer beware. That let the yeah, buyer be. Let the buyer, oh, well, you should have checked. Should have, what That's business what? does she have selling? What business does she have selling the Yorshma's property? I mean, there's a deed here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you should have checked. Shimon Galil Omer, Laola Machar Kayim. Shimon says, "No, I agree. I agree with you that if if the uh, if she says I'll return the dinner, I'll return that extra amount." What does that mean? As long as the deal is a good deal, unless, what do we mean by that? Unless, <coughs> un, until there's left in the field, Tisha Kavan. Tisha Kavan is 30, is a, is a, that's a saw and a half, enough to plant, meaning a saw and a half of seed, which is an area of 3,750 square amas. Square arms. That's what I mean. Thirty-seven hundred fifty, because a, a base saw is is uh, twenty-five hundred. A base saw is five thousand square arms, and this is like one and a half saw. A tishikav enough to plant it. What do we mean by that? So Rashi explains that. Um, let's say how much did she sheet over here? Let's say by one percent, really, right? Because a mona is let's say a hundred dinars, and she took a little bit too much. That's not really onan by karka. We don't have an all anyway. But the problem over here is this. If, there, if she hadn't cheated, there would have been enough to, to, to cultivate the land. Meaning if you don't have an area for a field of wheat or barley or what, of grain of 3,750 square, square amos, it doesn't pay to work the land. So if by stealing that, by taking that extra dinner, right? Let's assume we say over here that uh, she's gonna return, she's gonna get the dinner back to them, right? What do you mean back to them? Not necessarily from that field. The buyer might say, might say, listen, I bought it and that's it, right? But she'll somehow get the dinner back to them. But if by losing that dinner, they now have a field that can't be cultivated, then, right, then, uh, um, you know, th then it makes a difference. So then even Rabbi Shimon will say, no, the deal's off because you've left them, you've left that, that dinner difference made enough that they can't cultivate the land. As Rashi says, had he not, had she not cheated by that extra dinner, there would have been enough of the land to work. Uh, if it's a grain field, it's a Tisha Kavan, which is 3750 uh, square miles. If it's an orchard, Bas Chatsi Kav. Chatsi Kav is much less. A Kav is how much? Is, uh, is about 400, a little over 400 uh, uh, square amas. So Chatsi Kav is like a little over 200 uh, amas. So girls that when it comes to a Gina based Roba, even less than a little over a hundred square ounces is good enough. Meaning, so Shimon Yil says, as long as it didn't make a difference, meaning that eat, that extra that extra little dinner that she sold, if there wouldn't be enough to cultivate the land anyway, it doesn't make much of a difference. So if she returns them the money or the, or the equivalent, that's good enough, that's good enough. If taking that extra dinner meant that we went from a field that could be cultivated to now that something can't be cultivated, from Shimon Yil's motive to the chum that the whole deal is off. Okay, so that's a technical matter. Let's say Huxuba was 400 zuz. It was customary that the Kohanim, uh, Baskon would, would receive a, a large Huxuba of 400 zuz. Let's say 400 zuz, that's the same as uh, Diener. Diener and zuz is the same. Interesting, he mentions Diener and zuz in the same Vishta, but it's really synonymous. Uh, what she did was this. She's entitled to sell off 400 Dinner's worth of land to collect her ksuba, right? To collect her ksuba, even for mazonos for sure. But here we're talking about, like, say, the, the ksuba, she's collecting the mazonos, uh, collecting the ksuba. And she sold off. She couldn't find one person that's going to buy all 400 zuz worth. So she sold uh, one, uh, 100 zuz worth to one guy, Ruben, another one to Shimon, another one to Levi. 300, but that was fair. When it came to the fourth one, Ulachran Yafamana Diner Bamana. And the last one, the last one when she sold the, the last hundred zoos of property, the hundred dinas of the property, she sold a little bit too much. See, the other ones were still exactly right. She got a hundred, a hundred dinas of karka, she sold for hundred dinas to one, two, and three. When it came to number four, when it came to the money money of a dinner money, she sold a little bit too much. She gave up a little bit too extra too much land. Now, what do we just say? The deal is off, right? But does that ruin the other ones also? So he says, no. The last one is bottle, but the other ones are okay. In other words, the first three that she sold were for fair market value. 100 for 100, 100 for 100, 100 for 100. 
In the last case, she sold 101 for 100. So that one, the deal is off. Now, why is it important to see? So we'll see the Gemara will explain why we have to have this last case also. Isn't it obvious? Uh, pardon? She had 100 more. She had 400. She, 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 she was in town. The, the children had 1,000 uh, 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 zoos worth of land. She's entitled to take 400 right. for her silver. She sold 100 to one, fair, 100 to another, 100 to another, three times. And by the last one, she sold a little bit too much, but hers. she wasn't entitled, wasn't hers. She was entitled to 100 when she stole 100, the she sold 101. Wasn't hers. What do you mean wasn't hers? She was entitled she to 100. Got, she sold 300. She sold 300. Now she's she entitled to 100. She, she sold 101. That's, what, that's right, it's not hers. She took much, therefore the deal's off. That's what we just said before. Okay. The deal's well, before, off. It was her, it, she left, it was hers to sell, but she left them with less that they could. Oh, no, no, that's what Shingon Leo's opinion. According to the Tanakama, if the deal is off no matter what, in the case where she sold, uh, where, where, where Sybil was 100 and she sold 100 for 100, uh, she sold 101 for 100, deal's off. Shingon Leo says the deal's not off if it wouldn't have made any difference in them cultivating the land. Otherwise, otherwise he agrees the deal's off. Now we're saying this business about the deals off is even if a case where part of the deal was good because she sold it to Reuben, Shimon, and Levy, she sold it for a good amount. And the, the fourth one, she sold a little bit too much. That deal is off, but the other three are okay. That's, that's they saying that even though the last part of the deal is off, you don't say the whole thing is off, which she sold to Reuben and Shimon and Levy, that is okay. But the last one, like the Tanakama, is the deal is off. Uh, the first three are okay. The last one's no good. Now let's go. Let's go to analyze the first part of the mission. Mission said, if your Siva was for two hundred, and she sold a piece of land, that one she sold a, a one hundred shekel or one hundred uh, dinner piece of land for two hundred. That's it. She's done. Maisha shav masayim b'mana damila atav sadato. When she sold two hundred shekels or two hundred dinners worth of land for a hundred. She got a bad deal. It deals up. That's it. You took two hundred shekels worth of land, two hundred dinners worth of land. Don't ask me anymore. I'm, I, you know, I'm not the chayef to pay. You, you, you did a bum deal. The children lost their, their, their paid the ksuba. She got too bad. The army left sadata. So why, why in the other case was shava monamasan? Let's say she made a profit. She took only one hundred, one hundreds worth, one hundred dollars worth of land, and she got two hundred for it, where she made a profit. Why can't she also say? Uh, Nami Tamer let her say, Anar Vachna, I, I profited. What do you mean I got two? What, is it, what business is it of your children, of the children that she got uh, 200? So I took 100 worth of land, right? I'm entitled to 200 worth of land. I took 100. This that I made a profit on it. What's it your business? It's my profit. Just like, just like the other one was my loss. If I took 200 worth of land and I got 100 for it, it's my loss. I should also have my gain. Rabu, you see from over here, Khan Shana Rebbe, Rebbe learned from here, I call the Balamos. When a shliach is sent to do something, let's say a shliach says that somebody says, listen, kid, I'm sending you a shliach, uh, you know, um, whatever, let's say um, a shirt, uh, or and a shirt is a bad example, let's say uh, grain. The grain goes for $10 a bushel, $10 a bushel. And here's $10, go get me a bushel. And he goes to the store and the guy gives him two bushels for the same price. Who gets to keep the extra bushel? The shliach or the balabayas? So he says, my son Rebbe, I call the balamos. The one who sent him, the one who sent him, it's, he, it's, he, gets, he gets the profit. Not the, not the shliach, not the shliach. Why? Keretani, not such an extra bushel. Now we'll see what we're talking about. He gave him an extra bushel. I call the shliach. So this review. He says, no, the shliach got it. Why did he get the extra bushel? Because the storekeeper liked the shliach. Oh, how you doing, Yanko? He liked the shliach, so he gave him an extra bushel. You're not sure. Rashi says, why do you say cholken? He's not sure. When the, when the storekeeper, when the makolet owner gave him the extra bushel, was it because he knows the owner? The owner always pays his bill on time, etc. Or is it because the shliach, he liked the shliach, you're not sure, so you split it. That's Rabbi, that's Rabbi Yossi's opinion. Wait a minute. I have a time Rabbi Yossi and Rakola Balamos. We just said the, the Rabbi Yossi learned, and, and not that we just said it, Rabbi learned it, but that uh, Rabbi Yossi said in another place, no, that the owner, the one who sent the money, you know, there was Hutton, Maya Hutton Daya, as we say, right? The one who has the money, he's always the one who makes the decision. Well, he gets the money over here too. He gets the extra bushel. Rabbi says that. Omar Abraham, no, here's the, here's the point. 
lo kasha. It's not a steer of Yossi. Why? When something has a fixed amount of money, he says, for example, like grain or legumes don't get this name of a hundred of meat that sold a bushel of a uh, bushel of wheat, a bushel of uh, of grain or whatever. Uh, and that you split. If it's a fixed amount that you know you gave, you gave an extra bushel, Rabbi Yossi would say there, we're not sure. Did he do it for the shlich? Did he do it for the owner? You split it. That's what you have to do. This comes up, this can come up quite often. You know, you send the shlich to do something, who gets the extra amount, right? But Let's say something which doesn't have a fixed amount of money. For example, a garment, a shirt, uh, vegetables. Some so they're sold by estimate. You know, some 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 they charge more, some charge less. Certainly, karka has no fixed value to it. Uh, certainly, there uh, we say that Rashi says even for the shein lekitz the cold karka. Rashi says cold karka nimka b'omen zepachas from zebioker. No uh, karka has a fixed price to it. It all depends. Every deal is different, right? Dem shein lekitz. So dem shein lekitz then it's the balabos. In other words, that's what Rebbe, Rebbe said. Rebbe says, Lahore over here, you know, uh, why do you say that when she sold the land, remember she sold 100, she's entitled to 200 for Aksuba. She sold 100 of worth of land for 200. Why can't she keep the profit and say, okay, I only took 100, give it a no. It goes to the owner. Who's really the owner over here? The Yisomim, the heirs. It's really their property. She's entitled to, to sell it off in order to pay her ksuba, in order to pay them. If, if they don't, if nobody's acting on the children's behalf, there's no guardian, she's, she's allowed to go in there and, and sell it. But if there's a profit, the profit goes to the owner of the, of the money, which in this case is the Yorshim. If it's got a fixed price, Cholk, and you split it. You split it between the shliach and the owner. Dover she lo kitzva akol abalbas. Mike, what's Rabbi Papa teaching? We just said that that uh, Rebbe said that Rebbe is a kind son of Rebbe. What's Rabbi Papa teaching? Mike, much one. She knew you the shanin and she knew you that this answer that Rambam Bachama gave. What do we? We had a steer in Rabbi Yosi. Do you split it between the shliach and the mishaleach, or does it go to all to the mishaleach, the balamos? Does it go to the balamos? We had a stira. And Ram Bachama said, Oh, come the Dabashe Kits we come to Sham Kitzva. And Rapapa says Hilch is a double shesh of kids a hulk and double shell kids with Hulkman telling you that that, that Ram Bahama's answer is indeed a good answer. Iboilu, another question comes up now. Now this is related to what we're talking about when we say you selling, she's selling too much. Remember 101 for a hundred. Iboilu. Omar lay zavan lay lischa, but also zavan lay kura. Now before we talked about a kavik about lischa, a lesach is a half a kur. How much is a kur? A kur is is uh, thirty saw, which is quite a bit, one hundred eighty kav, and that's like uh, you know a lot. So here we're talking about when he told him to sell a piece of land. Sell my field. How much I want to sell? I want to sell a field a half a kur. A half a kur is a lesach. In Amos, that's thirty-seven <laughs> and a half thousand square Amos. Quite a piece of land. So he told him to sell a lesach, and that's a half a kur, thirty. Let's say thirty-seven and a half thousand square amas of land. That's what he told the shleich to do. Bazel zavon lekura, and he went. Now you could see it today when a man gave power of attorney to a lawyer or to somebody else. Says, okay, listen, I'm not here. Sell my house. You know, I, I have uh, I have a few uh, I, have, I have a few uh, I have some real estate in this apartment house, and he told him to sell uh, sell one apartment, and he went and he sold two apartments. I thought, he, I thought you told me to sell everything you have over there. The guy owned two apartments there. So here's the same idea. He told him to sell a lesach, which is a half a quarter, 37,000. And he went and he sold 75,000 square miles, double that up. My, what do you say over there? Is the deal off or only the extra part is off? In other words, as far as he told him to sell the lesach, right? The extra one that he sold, he sold double the amount. So let's say he said, let's, let's give an example with two apartments or two fields. He told him to sell field number one. And he went and he sold field number one and number two. They were each 37 and a half thousand square hours. So do you say, the second one for sure is not sold. He wasn't authorized to do that. He didn't have power of attorney. Today, you know, the, 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 proper, the lawyers would check it and it's not a power of attorney built the Jose and all that. And the deal would have never gone through. But in those days, they didn't have all that paperwork. He told him to sell one, field number one. And the guy went and sold field number one and field number two. My, most of all, the less from me, Connie. So the second one for sure is not sold. He wasn't authorized to sell it. 
but the, but it's the first one sold. Did he say my most of all the is just adding on the list of me kind of the first one is sold? Oh, Dilma Mavar al Dvarafu, he went against his instructions. What would you say over there? Again, I told him to sell, I told the guy to sell field number one. And he sold field number one and number two. So number two is for sure not sold. He wasn't authorized to do it. But is number one sold? Because at least, you know, that party was Makayim. Or do you say, no, he didn't listen to me at all, and the whole thing is off? Um Rabbi Akim in our pakod. Rabbi from that city, Mishmed Rabin, this is where he said, Tashma, let's bring a case. We're going to bring, we're going to eventually try to bring a case from our Mishnah. But here he wants to bring over here from here. Amr Balabai says, Shulcha, here's what happened. The Balabai is told the waiter, listen, I have some guests over here. Ten lahen chaticha l'orchem. Give, here's my serving tray. I got a lot of meat over here. I just made a barbecue. And uh, give everybody one piece of meat. And he told each, the, the waiter went and he told each of the guests, take two, take two. He wasn't authorized, so we say take two. They took three. They took three. And what happened over here? Then it turns out that the meat, by mistake, he took it from the uh, freezer that had hektish meat in it. So you're not allowed to eat hektish meat. It's, it's kadosh, right? You can't eat, you can't eat hektish meat. They're mold the hektish, right? It belongs, it belongs only Kohanim could eat it, let's say, whatever. We're not allowed to eat it. So cool, but they're all Moel. Who is Moel? The Balabias was Moel because he told him to eat one piece of meat. Now, technically, again, when it comes to a Dvara Veira, we have ancient Shlech Dvara Veira. If I tell you to go kill somebody, it's your fault, not my fault, right? It's not, I'm, you know, in, in common law and even thing, I think, but uh, why? Because Divri Av Divri Atama did me. You shouldn't have listened to me. God told you not to kill people. You shouldn't have listened to me. However, there's exceptions. When it comes to Truma, when it comes to Me'ila, the, the one who sent him is Moel also. So what happened over here? They're all Moel. Who is Moel? The guests are Moel because they took a third piece of meat without authorization. They ate Hegdish without, nobody told them to. The Shliach is Moel on the second piece of meat that each one took because he told them to do it and they did it. And the Baal Bais is Moel on the first one. Of, on the first one. So they're all Moel over here. It doesn't make any difference whether it's one guest or 20 guests. If even over one guest, the same thing applies. He took three pieces of meat and all three are Moel. Now, if you say that when I told you to give one or to sell one and you sold two, you're just adding on meaning, but the first one is sold, that's why the Baal Bayes is moral, because he told them one, even though the guy added two, you don't say that the shliach, the whole two is on, uh, that he wasn't listening at all. As far as the first one goes, he did listen. He just added on. Okay, and the part that he added on, he wasn't authorized, therefore the shliach is moral. But the first guy's moil, why? Because the shliach was just adding on to what he said. But the first one is a good deal, or the first one is moil over here. Eliyam at Mavra al Dvarabab, if you say he went against his instructions totally, Balabayas my moil. Why would the Balabayas be moil? Because uh, he went against my instructions entirely. By the time we learn, again, even though normally in Shlich when it comes to Me'ila, if the shliach followed the instructions of the Balabayas who instructed him, the Balabayas is moil. Then the shliach is moil because the Baal Bais didn't authorize him to do that. So it must be that you say that he's adding on, not that he's not listening, he's just adding on. And therefore the first deal would be a good deal, whether it's talking about the piece of meat or talking about selling the land. We want to know, it's not, you can't be a proof in there, why? The Omer Lehu, here, over here, the shliach didn't say take two. So you could say, oh, take two. If the Baal Bais is over, that means he's only adding on, not changing the instructions, adding on. Over here, it's speaking about where the shliach told the guest, Amalu, flu achas midaito shabalabais for achas midati. The balabais said to take one. I'm telling you, the balabais take one, but I'm telling you, you can take another piece of meat. Enjoy it. Take another piece of meat, right? Vishaklu, inu tos, and they took three. That's why they're all more, because over here, the, the shliach, it's not speaking where he, it's not speaking where the guy said, take one or sell one, and the shliach went and sold two or took two or whatever. The Shliach said, take one because of for the Baal Bayes. I mean, that's different. That's a different case. Because here, clearly, he was adding on. But what about... The difference the Shliach saying to take two? Take two, because when he said take one, because from the, the Baal Bayes said I take one. Say, take so, one. So then for sure, on the second one, he's responsible. Uh, so when one. he says take two. Yeah, he didn't say, say take two. Say two. So, we, so that's, that's, that question stands. That's still our question. When he says take two, is he adding on or is he changing the instructions? That's our question. Same thing with the land. I told you to sell one piece of land and you sell two. Are you changing my instructions? And therefore, even the first deal is off. 
or he's just adding on. The first deal is okay. Number one, the field is good. For sure, number two is no good, right? For sure, the second sale is no good. But his first one, good. That's our question. Tashma, let's bring a proof from our Mishnah. Haisik is mana, umachashava mana, the dinner, right? The mana, what happened? The civil was only $100. Let's say she was an almana when she got married or Grusha. So she was entitled to $100. And she took 101 uh, a land, land that was worth 101 And she sold it, the mana, right, for 100 Mechabotl, right? That's Mechabotl. My love, are we not assuming now? Listen now. He doesn't mean that we're assuming now in the Kasha that she didn't sell a field of 101 for 100 she got cheated. That's what we're assuming now in the Kasha, not like we learned in the Mishnah. We're assuming she sold 101 for 101. My love, the Zavin Shava Mana, the dinner, Bamana, the dinner. She sold 101 for 101. But what? Umay Bamana, but it says uh, for 100, Mana Shalot. In other words, in lieu of her $100 that she's supposed to receive for Aksuba, she sold the field of 101 for 101. Right? Umay afilu, afilu hi omeris, even if she says, Achsaris a dinner, even if she says, I'm going to return the dinner, Liorshim, the dinner, Makarka, I'll return the dinner, I'll buy another piece of Karka for them, Bukhtani Mechur Bottle, the whole deal is off. Why don't you say this? If she's selling 101 for 101, she was authorized to sell 100, right? That was her thing. And she sold 101 for 101. She sold too much. That's similar to the case of, I authorized you to sell one field and you sold two fields. And what do you say over there? That's our question. When you sold two fields, is the first field sold or not? What do we say over here? The whole deal's off. She sold, we're assuming now in the Kasha, the, the mission means she sold 101 for 101. The deal is off. Even if she says she's going to return the other hundred, the deal is off. She sold too much. Meaning she didn't just say, she, you don't say, oh, she was the hundred that she sold, that's valid, right? She was an authorized to sell a hundred. The extra one, that, that's, that deal's off. Just say the extra dinner's off. You don't say that. Say the whole deal is off. Right, So you see a proof over here that if you sold too much, the part that you authorized to is also no good, is all void. No, low. That's not shot in the mission. Like we said, shot in the mission is the uzzle. Doesn't mean she sold 101 for 101. She sold 101 for 100, like we saw in the Mishnah. She sold it too cheaply, right? She, they, she cheated them. And that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about our case is a case where she sold, uh, she was authorized to sell one and she sold two so the two is for sure no good but is one good that's our questions we want to prove from our mission say from our mission you see that it's no good at all because the whole deal's up no our mission is not speaking more she sold 101 for 101 and the question is about the extra here here she sold 101 for 100 she sold the two cheaply that's why the deal is off like Amar, what do you mean what's the chiddush in that the safer was that case remember the safer where she had 400 and she sold 100, 100, 100 valid, and then the last one was no good. I'll admit it's safer, but also since the safest speaking about where she sold it for less than its value, right? For less than its value, have it ratio, and then the ratio must not be speaking about that case. You can't say, but what is safe? So I six of us as the Mishnah. We saw the safer was where she where Xiva was for 400. Uh, Zeus, Machalazem, but Monalazem, but Mona really means it says Lazem, Monalazem, but you really say Ulazem, Mona. She sold three pieces for 100 each. Ulach, when Yafa, Mona. The dinner bamana, and the last one she sold 101 for 100. Shalachan mecher bottle, the last one's bottle. Vishakul and mecher kain. So what do you see? The the safe is speaking about where she sold it for too for for too little. So it's mashma that the reish is not speaking about that case. Reish is maybe speaking about where she sold 101 for 101. The chiddush is that the whole deal is off. It's low. Reish of a safe bottle. So both cases speaking about where she sold it for less. The safer the chiddush is hakamash malon that timer the ozel bidi asmi. The chiddush is this. The reason why the deal, the last deal is off is because she sold from their property, meaning the she was only in Tal The one dinner was already eating into their property. Right? But but if she sold right. of her own, let's say she had done the whole 400 yet. Let's say the first 100 or the second 100, she sold too much, then it would be a deal. It says more of a Hamid but we know that from the ratio already that if she sold too much land for too little money, that it's her tough, right. that that the deal is, is a good deal and it's her tough luck. She sold her, it was 200 and she sold 100 dollars worth of land for $200. Oh, Shava Masayim Bimana. Or she sold $200 worth of land for 100 That's it. She, that, that's it. Her Ksiba is done. Meaning that if, if she sold her land for two, what she was entitled to take, she sold for too little money, it's a good deal. 
Over there, that she's finished the whole deal. When she sold her oaks, the whole tip was 200. She took $200 worth of land and she sold it for 100. Bad, she's a bad business lady, too bad. Then the deal was off because she finished it. But over here in the safe, I might say, listen, if she sold, let's say she, remember, she sold to Reuben, Shimon, and each for 100 for 100. Let's say she sold to Reuben 101 for 100. So that, that, should, that should be it. Uh, I might say, no, 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 no. That's no good. Why? Since if in the last, the last hundred, the fourth hundred, if she sold that for too little, the deal's off. Maybe if she didn't complete the whole tzuba, she sold either the first hundred or the second hundred or the third hundred for too little money. Maybe that deal's also off. Why Xayer? Because if you say that deal's on, maybe you'll say the last one's also on. Kamash, well, we don't say that. And we say that whether she sold her whole tzuba, for too little money, or any part of her ksuba for too little money, as long as she didn't eat into the land of the Yisomim, it's still a good deal, as long as she sold it for less. But as far as our kasha goes, what's our kasha? If I authorize you to sell field number one, and you sold field number one and field number two, is field number one at least okay? Is field number one at least okay when, it, when you sold that? Lahara, you could also clear, I assume the impartial talk about this thing that maybe makes a difference if you sold it to one person or to two people, right? Because if you sold to one person, like the case where we said, no. huh? if you sold to one person, that's Why one thing. That, then, the then the char, then the that, then the should be okay. But if you sold like it all together, would, would part of it be okay? That's the char, what the kasha is, right? Um, right. Okay. It's like talking about okay. And you sold the whole thing because if you sold it as two separate, and also that would be the ride that we were trying to bring from the case where he sold, <clears throat> when we assumed that she was selling 101 for 101, 101 for 101, we said, you know, it, and, and that's all bottled, but it was one deal, it was one package. You didn't sell it as two parcels. If you sold it as two parcels, you could for sure say, the first one is okay, the second one's not okay, because the first one was authorized, the second one wasn't. But if you sold all of it, I was, I we authorized you to sell one acre, let's say, the two fields is a bad example. So one acre, and you sold two acres, at least one acre sold, if the Lokeh wants to keep it. Lokech Rashi says, let's say the Babais wants to go back on the deal. He can't go back on the deal because one is sold. Or do you say, no, the whole deal is off. Presumably we're talking about where it's one package. All right, we'll pick it up tomorrow from the Ikadam. Yeah.